fear grips the Central African Republic as rebels seize key routes. Ethiopian government offers reward for information on fugitive Tigray leaders. And a car bomb leaves nine dead in Afghanistan. Hello and welcome to Telesur English. I am Estefania Bravo from the headquarters of Quito, Ecuador. This is From the South. The government of the Central African Republic has accused of former President Francois Bossis of an attempted coup in a statement on Saturday as rebel groups launched attacks in the west of the country. The president's office claimed that Bossis was currently near the city of Bosembili, about 150 kilometers northwest of the capital, Bangui, and was intending to march on the capital with his men. The statement came just hours after the country's three main rebel groups declared they were joining forces against the government of Faustine Archange Tudera ahead of the December 27th legislative and presidential election. Meanwhile, President Tudera has called on citizens to be vigilant against what he called attempts by certain elements to grab power using undemocratic means. The ANE and the Constitutional Court have given their assurances that the elections will be held on time. It is through democracy that our country will experience development. Why take up arms against your compatriots? Call on young people to be vigilant. Be careful. Thank you. And on Sunday, the United Nations deployed troops to parts of the Central African Republic in response to the attacks by suspected Selika rebel fighters. Local media outlets reported that the rebels have taken control of key highways being the capital Bangui, leading to the capital Bangui. The situation has left the citizens of the troubled country worried about their safety. Shake it. I am worried. I'm worried for our country because of the rebels who are coming or I don't know what. We are afraid for our children. Not everyone here lives happily. We have problems like neither. I'm going to work for the Lebanese shopkeepers, but every time we have to flee, every time we flee. We have had enough of this behavior which divides people on the eve of an election. Our politicians play us off against one another, while they get along well with each other. But they push us to divide, to kill each other. The Ethiopian government is offering $260,000 for information on the location of fugitive leaders of a rebellious force in the northern Tigray region. The reward for helping capture heads of the Tigray People's Liberation Front, or TPLF, was announced via the state-run broadcaster EBC and tweeted by a government task force. TPLF leaders are believed to be hiding in the mountains on the border with Eritrea since they lost the regional capital, Mikili, to federal troops. The nearly four weeks of fighting between the two sides killed hundreds of people and drove millions across the border into Sudan. Jordan's Foreign Minister Ayman Safadi has urged the Biden administration to initiate, uh, initiate new negotiations between Israel and Palestinians to reach a political settlement based on a two-state solution. The thing is clear. There is a political deadlock and the negotiations are a stalemate. There are illegitimate Israeli actions on the ground that affects all chances to reach a comprehensive peace process that can only happen with the two-state solution. We can see building and expanding the settlements, the demolition of houses and territory annexation, and the violations against Al-Aqsa Mosque. A suicide bomber attacked a stadium in Somalia's central city of Galkayo on Friday, killing 15 people shortly before the arrival of the country's new prime minister, Mohammed Hussein Robo. Some high-ranking members of the Somali army were among those killed in the explosion, according to local reports. Al-Shabaab extremists have claimed responsibility for the bombing, according to the group's Andalus radio station. Robo, who took office in September, was visiting the city as part of a tour of the central state of Galmudu. And thousands of Sudanese protesters took to the streets of the capital Khartoum and its uh, twin city, Omdurman, on Saturday, demanding an acceleration of reforms on the second anniversary of the uprising that ousted former President Omar al-Bashir. Bashir was overthrown by the military in April of 2019, following weeks of protests against poor economic conditions and his three decades uh, autocratic rule. The protesters are, however, not happy with that. They termed as the slow 
pace of reforms by the transitional government that replaced Bashir. We demand the formation of the Legislative Council first and the removal of the Military Council from the ruling. We want 100 percent civilian rule and we don't want the army to participate in the governance with us. The soldiers have certain borders. They must respect their borders. There are still some issues that must be reformed. There are still some concepts that people must understand. The transitional government, in particular some of its components, must understand that the citizens is the basis. We want a clear path in which the economic situation is the basis because people took to the street because of distress and bad economic situation. More stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back to From the South, more news now. More than 300 Nigerian schoolboys who were kidnapped last week have been reunited with their families. Authorities said security services rescued them on Thursday, although it was not clear if everyone had been recovered. The school children were kidnapped at gunpoint by Boko Haram jihadist rebels on the 11th of December from a government school in northwestern Nigeria. Boko Haram attacked the school because they believe Western education is un-Islamic. If he has never suffered like this before in his life, he has to trek 70 kilometers in the bush, he has to depend on leaves, on, 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 on seeds, in the, in the, and drink from the pond water. It's, 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 very, it's very disturbing. I'm very, very, very happy, very, very excited, very, very happy and excited. You know, somebody that lost a son, a son, and later found him like that, and had. It is nothing better, uh, it is nothing of joy better than this, yes. Three people have been killed after a teenage girl blew herself up in a crowd in Nigeria's Borno state. The attacker set off her explosives among a group of men at a hangout next to a local chief's home. The state where the attack happened has been repeatedly targeted by Boko Haram militants who frequently target soft targets such as mosques, markets, schools and bus stations, often using young women as suicide bombers. After we finished eating our dinner with them, I left them and entered my house. Immediately when I entered my house, I heard the sound of the blast. Then I rushed to the area and I see three of them dead on the ground. Hundreds of members of the Mexican Army and personnel of the Health Department participated in the COVID-19 vaccination drills at the Army's military college in Mexico City on Friday. The objective of the, of the drills was to evaluate and correct logistical issues to optimize the procedures once doses of the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine arrive in Mexico. The vaccine they will receive is not an experimental one, but a vaccine fully tested that follows every regulation set for biological products of a high standard. With the vaccines that will arrive, we will be covering health workers in general, in January and February, December, January and February. If everything goes chronometrically well, we will be covering the entire population by March 2022. Moving on, Venezuela's president, Nicolás Maduro, has condemned the decision by the U.S. State Department to impose sanctions on a biometrics company that provided software used for Venezuela's parliamentary elections. The ineffable, the unpresentable Mike Pompeo today introduced some stupid sanctions, like the real invisible that he is, as he is on his way out against the company and the businessmen who manufacture the machines so that the people of Venezuela could vote on December 6. This constituent assembly was called to win peace, to restore peace, to strengthen the rule of law, to strengthen the way of anti-imperialist resistance and has fully accomplished its mission. 
And furthermore, the Venezuelan government has rejected the International Court of Justice's ruling that it holds jurisdiction in a border dispute it has with Guyana that dates back more than a century and has flared up recently with the discovery of oil. The Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela repudiates the ruling of the International Court of Justice on the above-mentioned terms. It once again claims the validity of the Geneva Agreement of 1966 and ratifies that it will continue to exercise its just claim in view of the grotesque fraud involving the arbitration award of 1899 to the detriment of its territorial integrity. Venezuela reiterates its call for this dispute to be channeled in an amicable manner and proposes the opening of direct negotiations with the Cooperative Republic of Guyana in accordance with the international law. We're taking one last break, but stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. More news now. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has announced a new stay at home for London and Southeast England to curb a new strain of the coronavirus that is reportedly more infectious. Non-essential retail, indoor gyms and leisure facilities and personal care services must close. People must work from home if they can, but may travel to work if this is not possible, for example, in the construction and manufacturing sectors. People should not enter or leave Tier 4 areas and Tier 4 residents must not stay overnight away from home. Individuals can only meet one person from another household in an outdoor public space. Unlike the November national restrictions, communal worship can continue to take place in Tier 4 areas, and these measures will take effect from tomorrow morning. We're issuing new advice on travel. Although the new variant is concentrated in Tier 4 areas, it is nonetheless present at lower levels around the country. So we're asking everyone in all tiers to stay local. People should carefully consider whether they need to travel abroad and they should follow the rules in their tier. Those in Tier 4 areas will not be permitted to travel abroad, apart from limited exceptions such as for work purposes. Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte has announced the new coronavirus restrictions to curb a sharp increase in the number of new infections. We have to intervene, and it's not an easy decision. It's a difficult decision to strengthen the necessary measures to face the next holidays and to protect ourselves also in view of the restarting of activities in January. We can speak of a red zone between December 21st and January 6th. It'll be forbidden to travel between regions, to avoid increasing infections. All the national territory will be in the red zone during the public holidays. On December 28, 29 and 30, and on January 4th, it'll be possible to move within the municipality of residency only, without having to give a reason for travel. The end of this nightmare is in sight. Also, if with restriction we are getting close to the vaccine day, on December 27th, in Italy and another group of European countries will have the vaccine day. The United States on Friday authorized Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use, paving the way for 6 million doses of a second vaccine to soon begin shipping across the hardest hit country in the world. This evening, the FDA granted the second emergency use authorization for a COVID-19 vaccine. This authorization for Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine comes just one week after we authorized the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. With FDA's authorization, this additional vaccine will soon be distributed throughout the country by our federal partners. Over 1 million doses of a Chinese COVID-19 vaccine has been given to the nation's citizens. According to officials, the job has been administered to medical workers, the elderly and other at-risk groups. China has indicated that the country's three major vaccine centers, including CNBG's Beijing and Wuhan Institute and Sinovac, have the capabilities for large-scale production of the vaccine. Health officials also said no serious or adverse reactions have been reported so far. 
India's COVID-19 cases have surged about above 10 million. The record, the record is the second highest in the world after the U.S. According to the health ministry, the number of cases increased by just over 25,000 in 24 hours, while the total number of deaths from the virus now stands at 145,136. The 10 million mark came as India is gearing up to start vaccinating its population early next year. Yeah, they are not like uh, afraid of the disease, so that's why it is spreading a lot. They are not wearing masks and all, so that is why. Not sanitizing properly. Yeah, India is big, but look at the population size also. Na. We have a huge population, obviously we have to control, we have to make sure that everyone plays their part and make sure that, you know, they are doing their role in order to reduce this. Actually, we are uh, living the, like, all the time we have to wear masks. We also want vaccine so that we can go freely outside uh, without any fear. At least uh, nine people have been killed after a car bomb blast in Afghanistan's capital, Kabul. The country's interior minister, Masood Andarabi, announced that about 20 people have also been wounded in the attack. The attackers are reported to have targeted a lawmaker's convoy as it was passing through an intersection in Kabul's Koshal Khan neighborhood. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack so far. At least uh, four people were killed and one reported missing after a strong cyclone swept through the Pacific island of Fiji. Officials said they are still carrying out evacuations and assessing the extent of the damage caused by the cyclone named Yasa. The strong winds were traveling at for, uh, 345 kilometers per hour and Fiji's Wanua Lebu Island was the most affected. The government has also declared cyclone Yasa as a national disaster. The casualty for TC Yasa remains at four. However, we have received an information regarding a missing person, uh, a farmer from Lekutu. We've yet to ascertain uh, confirmation from the Fiji Police Force. As of when that is received, we will then re release that to the public. As of 8 a.m. this morning, there are 183 evacuation centers open across the four divisions with 7,731 evacuees. And with that story, we've come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at telesorenglish.net. And also be sure to follow us on social media. We are on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram as well. For Telesor English, I am Stefania Bravo. See you next time.